And we're going to paint a reproduction white crappie. Now, a lot of this stuff, I already trimmed it out with uh, scissors. Just trim it like this. And went all the way around. And I also trimmed out these uh, two pelvics and one pectoral fin. Now, a lot of companies, they don't put wood inside their reproductions. I think they're all supposed to. Put your piece of wood in and use some expanding foam or something to get it to stay in there. Glue it real good with Bondo. A lot of different things you can do. I'll show you that later. So basically, it's holding by the hole, the screw hole, because there's no piece of wood in the back. But as far as Dremlin, I just use a regular little small drill bit that fits my Dremel tool and it works fine. Because the flashing is usually thinner and comes right off. Except for the mouth, that's going to be a little rough. some kind of thing to protect your lungs from getting this dust down in them. Fiberglass repair, anything like that, you need it. And you also need a good fan, kind of keep air circulating. You kind of get the idea.
two by one and a half. Try to center it in the fish, maybe a little bit towards the front. You know, you don't want to be back behind the tail. You just trace him out. There you go. Now we just cut this out. Put the wood piece in it. We glue it in. Or bondo it. Now all we gotta do is install the fins. Almost a good fit. Down just a hair bit more. Sure it's good enough. Yeah, look at that. Perfect fit. I'm gonna go ahead and hot glue this in. You can use Bondo, either one. While my glue gun is heating up, I'm gonna go ahead and drum on my other fin uh, juncture places. They're almost directly under where the pectoral fins are, but actually just a hair bit behind, so about right here. <laughs> Put it in there and make sure it's uh, make sure it's enough. It definitely don't take much. And don't worry if there's some minor gaps because you can use a epoxy sculpt or heck even latex caulk or something to fix it. Just make sure the angle of your fence is the way you like them, and leave it there until the glue dries. And you can even dremel these gills out. 
and I'm debating to do it. I've got some old gills from like old mounts where I've cut heads off of old fish and I saved the gills. But you can also go to like Hobby Lobby or Walmart. It's like fuzz on a wire and it's red and you can uh, smooth it down I think with like maybe Mod Podge or something and, and make gills out of it. If you want sharp corners, you know, where your fins join the body, like in this corner, you can get like a hacksaw. Um, you can get those hacksaws too, you know, the partial ones that are real handy for this. I just don't have any. You know, it's the hacksaw. I mean, you can get a hacksaw blade that's got a handle. But you get what's going on. So that makes a good little fin juncture. A good small dermal tool, which they make those too. Epoxy sculpt is quicker because it doesn't shrink that much. And if you like really had the paint in a hurry, smooth it out where we glued it to the body to make it look more natural. Spray it with a little water. Make sure it gets good and wet on there. And then Make it look like a smooth juncture area. Make it look as natural as possible. Looks good to me. Do these other fans where they're connected. There we are. Make it look like a natural connection. And the eye needs a lot of help. A little water on your finger if you need me and kind of give it a good start. Probably put way too much really, but uh, it comes off. Put just enough. I'm putting more than you need, that's for sure. Just clean that eye up real good and get ready for painting. There you have it.
tuck under the gill flap those uh, gill rakers the gill rays I guess is the right word um, but we're going to go ahead and install some gills Okay, now I got some gills and I've already kind of sized them up and used a little sharpie pen to see where I'm going to cut them. Yep, I've got this right here and uh, kind of sized it to fit a little bit. Just snip that off. And the thick part off. There's still a little bit of skin holding these gills together that's on the on past that. So I just Take that off. This part I use, and then I just glue it in. There we are, and then we just kind of tuck them up in there. Make sure they're in there nice and good. Further than that, even. Yeah, they got to go in there pretty dang far. You come out a little bit there, more up there. That's perfect. Well, I ended up going the heels. Had a little bit of a tough time with it, so I kind of put them in. Then I dropped glue down through the mouth down into them and then let the glue dry, and then it's holding them in. But the gills aren't really supposed to like stick out real far anyway. It's supposed to be something you see when you look behind the gill flap. And so that's pretty much what I replicated with the gills. I'm going to try to dress up the empty spot that's behind the gills. Gonna fix up a little damage that I've done to where the fins connect to the body using a little bit more of the caulk. Epoxy's coat would probably be better, but caulk will work, you just have to wait for it to dry, you know, for a good while. Where it was hollow when I cut the gills out, you know, there was like an empty spot back there. Well, what I did to correct that was after I put the gills in, I put some glue in there, shot some from the top, some some from the bottom, a lot. And then I held the fish up like this, I held the fish up like this, let the glue kind of run around, and it rebuilt what was cut out when I tried to, you know, put some gills in the fish. Although it's clear looking when it, when it gets painted, it'll... Uh, It'll show that it's all flush again like it was before. Just using glue. Hot glue and letting it dry while I'm turning it for a little while. Not long either. Well, if you have a problem with some of the mold release on there, it's a little bit of warm water. Maybe warm, yeah, just some warm water. Soapy water maybe. And that mold release comes right off. Now I just gotta let a few things draw on it, like some of the, the caulking I put on it, and it'll be ready to paint. Okay, I've got a fish, it's a reproduction. All the the work's been done as far as assembling it. So you not only know how to do a tinny method on a largemouth bass or like maybe a muskie or a walleye. Well, here's all you gotta do. This is dark brown, by the way. Probably didn't hurt to go from the extreme rear angle. And I'm not even worried about the fins because a lot of times I paint the fins wide anyway. But, let's say you're worried about, I don't know. You know, you only know how to do the tinny method on largemouth bass or something. 
Well, here is your answer. You get a paper towel. And if you don't have steel wool on hand, it's not the end of the world. You know, maybe you've got uh, maybe some lacquer thinner. And you still get the job done, you know what I mean? It may take a little while with the lacquer thinner. Let's see how it stays. And I angle spray a little bit because I wanted it to stay in there. And basically, you, you want your fish to look like a fish that's not been painted yet. Like a skin mount that's not been painted yet. That's what you want your fish to look like. We'll just keep going forward with it, of course. And you work with it like that. That's how you take care of it. And then you start your tinny method. And you've got so many layers of paint you're putting over and nobody's going to tell the difference whether it's a reproduction or a real fish. It works for walleye and largemouth. Especially for me, I use the tinny method on the walleye and the largemouth. I do this on my walleye. And all the details that pop up on a walleye will pop up on an artificial replica. And so, and the same with the largemouth. You know, if you like doing the tinny method. You do that, wiping the belly, and you're doing the skin mount, and you're just, you know, you're putting in the details yourself, but we do that anyway, basically, so you can have just as good a results, if not better, with like a walleye and a largemouth on a reproduction, and I've done it myself, so I know. But that's all I wanted to add. Okay, now if I was trying to do a reproduction, I'm sure, but I would want to go ahead and get these markings right. It looks like there's one, two, three marks that kind of radiate. Uh, this last one kind of goes below. The other one kind of goes above and comes around. Okay, this one. Okay, so we got this one. Kind of make the marks like you would a large mouth or something. I don't see any difference at all, really. Okay, then that one, it goes below the ear flap, and it comes above, it may even connect a little bit, but it, it goes around the ear flap, it looks like, goes up a ways, then it meets with a lateral line and comes back in, and there's another one right here, and some of them come down. See, it goes around, and these other two go down. Then there's like another one, almost like a fourth one. It comes right off the, it comes off the eye too. It radiates right off the eye a little bit, but it's way up here. So it goes, it's almost at the very bottom. Not quite, it goes about right here. But it's very light. Looks like you get some marks through here. Start with the one, two, three in a row, and then above it maybe two in a row. Then some of them go down. Up like this. But here at the lateral line, it looks like there's a, towards the head right in here, some of them are connected. What it is, it looks like they almost come down from the spot. There's like, there's some stripes. Let's see. Yeah, there's like what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven bars that stop. One's in front of the spiny dorsal, that would be here. Okay, one, 
one in front of this tiny dorsal and the other three are on the spiny dorsal so you got one uh let's see here's the last one well actually a little bit before about right here okay so you've got so you've got one two and then three and the spaces in between the stripes are, are thinner okay and you know you can make them as detailed as you want oh yeah the first thing i did was i, I got some dark black painted over it got some lacquer thinner and went over it replicate what a skin mount would probably look like or really close to it so that's kind of what we got going on Now here at the lateral line, they almost all, almost, they kind of meet. I mean, they break up a little, but not much. And the, the, the barring pattern is hollow inside. So not all of them get it. Okay, that's, uh, okay, there's, okay, that's the first four. And we got... Five, six. The other one is behind the door, so okay. Yeah, it's hardly hollow at all. I'm sure they all differ too. Then after that, you got spots. It's like a like a little V here that goes to the ladder line. There's some kind of stuff, maybe a little above it, and a couple of, almost like a bar here, and you got some more spotting, random spotting, making up little bars and what have you. Okay, then you go around here, and some of them connect around. I mean, it's almost like they, they encircle something. Here's one above the lateral line. Well, this one goes up below the lateral line. And below that, you've got. And then you've got here. Towards the tail, it looks like some of them are hollow at the lateral line. Okay, this one, almost all of them are right through here. This is just a rough draft, you know, you can fix it up later, you know, with your airbrush. Okay. Okay, then through here you may have a spot or two. And of course through here you got your spotting. You can almost just put a line. As you get towards the end, it starts breaking up. You can look at my fish painting schedule for that. Now then spotting below this, this stripe pattern, towards the front, they're pretty solid. It's like this first bar comes down and it's like, takes up about three scales and two scales. Then it goes back and then takes up another scale. 
In other words, some of these spots are clumped together. Is the right word? They relate roughly to the barn pattern. It's like the barn pattern goes through the lateral line vaguely, and then it uh, kind of stops. It'll take three to four scales of dots clumped together. Then it stops. Towards the tail, they get, they kind of relate to, they come, uh, yeah, towards the latter one, they, okay, one, two, three. I'm better off using a pen for all this, really. Okay, looks like we've got then here's another one. Okay, and then looks like that goes almost through the eye, I guess you could say. Both of them do. And they come out the front right in the center. Well, you know, there's that. I don't know if it goes to this one or that one. Or this one. They all connect. And there's another lighter one that kind of goes like there. Well, it looks like they go there. And another one. And maybe a little bit more. Yeah, about like that. Spiny dorsal has a few. It's got a couple of couple of rows right here, and another one. And then I think a few here. Well, it looks like yeah, they kind of fade out, I guess, but uh, they're there. That's fine. This could be kind of considered spots too, really, so. Okay, then there's some back here. A sharpen pen will leak through your other colors. If you put them on, you know, light enough, they definitely will. And so, you just kind of use these as your guidelines. If you know what I mean. Kind of break up a little. Good enough right there. See, we're going to like do the edges anyway and highlight the fin. So I don't know if there's any down here. I don't see them really. Don't see them here either. So basically, all we got to do is worry about right in here. 
Looks like the first one go takes about yeah about three scales. Looks like one, two, three, three scales. And then it takes about two scales. Then Right there's a spot there and it connects then it does it again right here almost the same design three then two then three then two possibly even two above it it could be two three and then two okay so they're they're, they're doing their thing they're making spots and there's still sporadic spots even in between like here's one, and then here's one, and you go here's one, here's one, and here's one, that's three. Well, this next one goes four, four scales. Then, looks like, like maybe four scales that way. And then it goes down to like three scales and then it goes down to two or about the width I think you don't have to be exactly on the scale but okay then and they're, they're relating roughly to the lines above them sort of so that's another thing kind of Kind of hard to, I guess all in all, yeah, it's just a, uh, you make almost like a, <clears throat> hmm, yeah, that's kind of a little bit weird. You don't have to be right up on the line on all of them. Seems like towards the front they do it. Okay, then we go down here. And towards the end, it actually seems like it wants to go to the lateral line even a little bit more. It's weird. Okay, so we've got that at the lateral line. Below that, there's a couple here, a little couple of streaks here, a couple of little spots in a row. They, they'll make a little clump there. That's kind of how they're doing. Let's see what we got going on through here. We've got huh. Yeah, the spottings are clumped together more right Kind of right in the middle more than anything like right here Right there towards the back even Let's see right here. You get down through here, it's almost like like they're going around making a little spot, sort of. I don't, I don't can't can't hard to hard to explain it. I'll try to dress it up here in a second. I say spotting, but they're actually like individual scales, and a lot of them are together. What you can do with your airbrush. Or heck, even just a brush. I guess this this could count as a brush. Well, I'm thinking 
by the time you go over all these marks with your airbrush, it's not going to look so harsh. That's just a Sharpie pen. Airbrush will soften the edges of every mark. Maybe even make them a little bit thicker. And all that's going to look pretty good when it's done. But just use my paint schedule and uh, it should come out pretty good. Before you even seal the fish or anything, I like to go ahead and bring out some of the polish on these scales. To make them look more realistic. Plus you're toning it in to make it look Remember all the white paint I put over everything? So I'm toning it in, but I'm also bringing out the, 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 the back of the scales. Now we're going to paint a reproduction warm mouth. I've got several videos where I'm working on a reproduction warm mouth. Well, I'm just not getting around to actually painting it. Make sure you saw the mouth is right. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and paint all the fins. Paint them white. Yeah, this works for skin mount too, because this is supposed to be replicating the skin mount. I've got a skin mount one that I've done. Definitely has some issues. If you prefer to put it on light enough where you can still see your mark, so you put your sharpies in. It's like on a bass or a blue gill or anything. That's how you get around the jaw here. Using the maxillary. Um, so if I go on a bass, I'll get these gills down here. This little bit of bone that separates the gill flap from the cheek. I usually get it kind of white too. Then right up here, there's like a row of just below the gill that gill. It covers part of the gill rakers right down in here. I'll go ahead and get that. Maybe lightly down here. fish a little dark I'm gonna go ahead and throw a little bit of white all over him. Just a give him up just lighten him up a little bit overall. Okay now there's little white dots and they go all over. Most paint skills will call for dots but they're really streaks. If you if you see them they're really streaks. But yeah, a lot of times they're they're not really dots, they're like streaks. Maybe like two of them connected. Just try to slip them out kind of evenly. You'll be better off if you do that. Kind of see what I'm doing here. Now I've got my white pearl. I'm just gonna get my belly real good. Maxillary looks good with pearl on it. All this looks good with pearl. Get the, everything that was white on the belly, the lower belly. Make sure that's good and pearled. This one, uh, pectoral. Oh yeah, this one gets white too, by the way. Uh, I forgot to do it. But it's white anyway. Okay, now this color goes 
even up on the side of the belly. I guess the white spots need to be kind of pearled. You want to make sure those white spots have a good coat of pearl over them. So I guess about a third of the way up. I'll go ahead and throw some on the cheeks too. Little pearl never hurt nobody. There we are. You got my bright yellow. I'm just going to paint all the fins. I don't know, I guess about a, a medium light, medium to light coat. That's right, yellow. nose, top of the head, And then the maxillary, top of the back. Yeah, the white spots, you probably want to keep them, um, about right at the lateral line and, and, and not go up really any farther than that. Looking at my reference pictures, all the lateral line itself has a lot of white in it. So it wouldn't be wrong to incorporate white. I may go back to white and whiten up my lateral line because it does show to be uh, kind of white. It sure does. The cheeks get the yellow. Gills. On this individual fish, even the lower jaw and everything gets it. That belly. A lot of times I use yellow ochre on the on the belly, but but I'll fade this. This color will fade out about. Where the pectoral fin is. Now 
I called for a white vesting of the white, just change the value of the white spots to a, to a vague yellow color. And then you're basically done. There we are. That's it. Okay, got my white again. Looks like right up to about the face or where the gill starts, right along the ladder line, you know, there's some stuff there. And it's white. I'm going to put it back in. yellow anyway on my spots. You can see how it kind of is. You get the idea. This is accurate. It shows in my reference pictures. Uh, sort of fades out around the tail. Not right in there. Okay, I sort of want to fix something else that's not right. Now, I mean, it's right, but. Oh, okay. I'll show you what I mean here in a minute. And what it has to do with, it has to deal with, uh, okay, this black part in the back, on the, on the ear, there's actually a marking that goes out from the top of it and then a marking the marking that comes from the eye to the top of it and then there's a marking that comes from the eye to the bottom of it. So it kind of loops around around the the, the the gill flap. So I just want to incorporate that in because that is that is correct to have it that way. So basically, I, I painted over oh, one of my marks that wasn't actually correct. So that's kind of what I done. You got my bright yellow again, and I'm going to just touch up everything that uh, I just ever so lightly go over that white. I mean, where you can barely even notice it. kind of same with all these other spots some of them are already good enough there you are just yeah, that's good enough up there Pretty good right there. Yeah. Now right here. I got bright orange. What I want to do is I want to mimic this orange color underneath here, going all the way to the tail. Just on the bottom. See, even above the orange, there's a little bit of yellow. So the trick is to be real, real light with this. But it even gets it on the mouth.
Looks like even the maxillary glitches. I mean, real lot like. Some of it could be lining from, from you know, it could be lining where they took the picture or something. But I'm still going to see all that's orange right there, the lower lip and all that. I'm just going to try to incorporate all that in. You know, it could be lighting is what I'm getting at. But even right down here, uh, right here, right in between the jaws and the cheeks, it gets it a little bit, mainly at the bottom. Stays at the bottom. This, this may not be super... It may not be the actual way it's supposed to be, but for this reference picture it is. Back right here I'm just going to stay on the bottom. Probably could lower the camera a little bit to let you see it. But you see it going on there. Just on the very bottom. That's it right there. That is it. I want to re turn your fish to get the you know get him underneath. You know, however you got to do it. That's uh that's about the intensity right there. You just kind of getting it underneath. It's everywhere. Uh, just trying to make it make it good and uniform looking. You know, I don't think it's wrong to use this color a little bit on the fins. Feel like where they come out of the body. I see it a little bit on the, in this picture. It shows a little bit. You know, just to change the value a little bit. Not do them all that way. Just to change the value of that yellow just a hair bit. Not much. I mean, where you can barely even notice it, you have to give it a, you know, a second look before you even see it. Yeah, okay, I got a mixture here of, well, what it is, is uh, it's rich brown and dark brown, and it's like... If anything more rich brown than dark brown, about 60, 40 or something like that. But basically what I'm going to do is put all my markings in. Kind of lighten them up a little is what it's doing. I put on one of the sharpie pen, I'm just going to go back over them. Now right here,
Basically, I'm going over all my marks with uh, this dark brown kind of a. Uh, if anything, you probably it's probably better just to go dark brown. It, yeah, I think it might look better just to go straight dark brown. But I've got rich brown here, uh, half and half with black. But I'll see how it looks. A rich brown and dark brown. Although dark brown straight without rich brown probably work better. I just wanted to tone down the rich brown a little bit where it's not so dark. But I don't know. I probably should just went dark brown. Yeah, in an earlier video I've got on my YouTube channel, I show where I've uh, I drew the marks in on a reproduction, and then I went over the marks with a, a Sharpie pen because I knew I was going to paint over them. That's why I've got it all marked up like it's like a it, you know almost like it's a skin mount or something. I'm just gonna go ahead and darken everything in with my paint, uh, my rich brown dark brown mixture, and I'll show you what I've got. And this is. This is what I've got so far. You can see how the back markings are, are kind of accurate. That's how they sort of look. You see how the back markings are kind of a little bit... They stop at the lateral line a little bit and then they break up. You can kind of see that. See how the lateral line's a little bit white? Well, see, I've sort of done the same thing on this. So I'm just following along with what I see. The barring kind of breaks up after you go past the spiny dorsal. They tend to break up a little bit. So uh, that's kind of what I'm incorporating in a little bit. Now I'm gonna put my spots on my fingers. Okay, kind of done better on that. To get the idea. Some of the tail. Come in a little bit from the rear and then they just kind of fade out, you know, from the sides, I mean, there we are, about like that. I got a little gold sparkles. This should be okay idea to go ahead and put this in. I should have already done it. I just do the body. Sides of the jaw.
I'm going to mess with the fins. The upper two thirds. That's got a little bit of gold sparkle to put on there. Kind of going in between the marks. Upper two thirds of the body. There you are. Okay, now we got a rich brown again, or chocolate brown. And we spray basically the upper two thirds of the fish. See, this is kind of giving the orangey look too. You know, from uh, we just everywhere we put that gold sparkle. The heavier, heavier on top, the lighter you go down. Fade out two thirds down. By the time you get to the base of the pectoral fin, or, or the pectoral fin, be faded out completely. It takes on an orangey look too. This is a rich brown. Definitely heavier on top. There we are. Good enough for me. Not sure if you can even tell it. But I can. Third to the way down. Can't even tone that orange in a little bit with this rich brown on on the very bottom of the belly. Looks nice. Sure does. And I got my dark brown. And this is what we're gonna darken the back with. Find a good reference picture and use it. I've got my one. I don't want to go too dark to, you know, to. Here again, you fade out about two thirds down from the top. But here I'm doing the mouth. I'm angle spraying, letting some of it hit the front of the maxillary. Uh, the lower lip. Right here on the end. See where it gets it. A little bit on top. A little bit from the. Whoops. Not pulling on both sides. Just come together. Hard to do it without getting in the way sometimes. All this gets it. Okay. 
Here goes the very top of the back. Be sure you do your other side too. So right along the top of the back. I don't want to get much darker than that, really. With this color, I'm going to go down and fade it out two thirds of the way down. Completely fade it out. That's actually good enough for me right there for the body. Now, all we got to do is angle spray our fins to bring our fin rays out. Okay, I'm angle spraying all my fins, you know, however you got to move them. Just do whatever you got to do. Just bring out the rays is all I'm doing. Maybe adding a little bit of darkness. I'm going to carve these fins and get them, you know, just angle spray them real good. So I'm going to bring them out just a little bit, you know. Try not to darken the fins, but it happens. It should happen more than what I want. You know, it happens where I darken them too much. You just let it grow on there and you let it ride. Bring out the detail on the fins, that's all we want to do. Same with this one down here. The maxillary. That's good. I just want to sort of paint our maxillary, you know what I mean? Okay. So now we do our fins. Get down in between them, you know, with a rolling motion. Digging up and then going down in between the spines with it. With it. Just catching the end of it. I let you determine how much you think you need to go down with it. And then you have to. Sometimes I gotta blend them in if I go down too deep. That looks pretty good for the spiny. I'm not going in just a little bit, not much, okay? Same with the tail. I do the tail the same way, you know. Sometimes the fin determines how dark you want to do it. You know, the, the overall darkness of the fin? Sometimes, you know. In other words, it can be too loud sometimes. So if it's not dark enough, it don't look good either, so just kind of feather it in. that right there. I think that looks pretty good right there. Do the bottom one the same way and then the camera real good. Yeah. So I'm go in, go out, go in, go out, go in. I'm not going to mess it up. There we are. Yeah, you just want to feather it in. You don't want it to be too strong. But I like it right there. Or you can always feather it in if you got it. It'll make it blend a little bit better. That'll work for me, though. 
Okay, here on the ends. Blend it in like that a little bit. Kind of feather it in from the rear. The darkness of the thing can determine how dark you want to do this. A little bit. You know, just a little. Production and we're working inside the mount, you know, to make it look like there's a lot of depth. Which I did make it kind of deep. I just, just drilled it out with a Dremel tool, is all I did. I'm blending everything in by angle spraying it. Just a little, you know, not just a little, just a little. I think everything is good. Now, I don't think it hurts the angle spray a little bit to bring out some of the, you know, maybe some of the stuff that's naturally on the fish, you know, scales. I don't want to get too carried away with that. It's so maybe a little bit along the bottom. Now oh, there is a little bit of a dark color on that bottom. Kind of angle sprayed a lot more than what I did, but I didn't. That's okay. That's fine right there. That is fine. I'm going to spray a little bit to bring up the scales. Just on the upper one third of the body. That's fine right there. That's good. That'll work for me. Okay, now I've got selfish blue. It's to go lightly over the midsection of the body. And I'm supposed to, with white dots, are supposed to turn into a turquoise look. But I'm not supposed to go too heavy with it. You're sitting down when, when they want you to go light, though. It says even the stripes on the head. Okay. That would be these. And that ladder line, I don't know that. I want to blew it up just, just a hair. Okay, now I've got shimmering blue or iridescent blue, depending on what uh, company you go with. But it says to apply a moderate to a light coat just right here on the maxillary. on the maxillary. Okay, now I got white. There's white on the front, on the very front of the leading edge of the pelvic fins. 
and there's a little bit of white right here on the edge of this tail here. And there's also behind the behind that black spot, the edge of the ear flap. Right here, it goes around this black, black, black ear flap spot here. Now you might want to use a brush, to be honest with you. That's what I got. There we are. Now I can, I can fix that up with a little bit with a Sharpie pen. That's what I'll probably do. And now right here on the leading edge of the, of the, of the pelvic fins. It helps for me to hold my breath. Gives me a little bit of stability. Touch it up with a Sharpie pen, get it looking kind of good. Helps to kind of hold my breath. That looks a lot better. Yeah, I'm going to put the edge, the edge of the gill flap in. It uh, calls for gill red. It's just a little speck, anyway. That's good enough for me right there. Clean the eyes off. When I first started it, the paint schedule actually called for painting these little strips white, you know, in between the black bars. I should have painted them white first, but they were white to begin with. I just uh, kind of darkened them up. Got a little dark with it. But, if y'all have seen some of these guys, some of them are like really dark. Some of them are like down in Florida and places. Some of those swamps and stuff. They're dark. Okay, now I've got my gloss top coat. Start phasing everything in. Or I mean, put my gloss on it. I want to do a flash coat first, you don't want it to run. In other words, you want to go on kind of thin, not real heavy. I like to use a, just, well, I've been using it a lot of times, but polyurethane gloss. A lot of times it does wonders on fish like this. Put you on another one. But this is how I paint a warmouth, in this case a reproduction.